What it is, what it do, what it is, lads and laddies. It is your boy, Dakota Griswold of GNG. You here? Welcome back to Yesterday and Today. This, of course, is the show where I tell you all the news from yesterday, today, just to give you a bit of a refresher. But before we even get to that, y'all know the drill. Hit like if you like this video. And if you want to keep it real and you don't, dislike it. It's all good. And, you know, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little notification bell so you know when your boy is posting new videos. But with that out the way, let's get to the video. Now, Mortal Kombat announced that they have story DLC. Now, the story in Mortal Kombat 11 was pretty dope. That ending was something I wasn't expecting. I was like, yo, what do you do from here? And before some of the events in the, um, in the, in, in the credits happened in Mortal Kombat 11, in this trailer, Shang Tsung seems to interfere with Liu Kang in the trailer. And this is probably, not even probably, this is definitely a spoiler if you didn't finish the story in Mortal Kombat 11, but he basically, he comes out of a portal and you know that it's his voice, but then he seems to have a couple allies with him and it has me wondering, we're getting story DLC, but this does this also mean that we're getting another season pass, uh, season two? I'm all for it, I absolutely love Mortal Kombat 11, I love Mortal Kombat, and it sounds really good, and I can't wait to see what happens in the story. That happens to be one of the few games that I beat this year, and I absolutely, that actually happens to be the game that killed my last Xbox One X, come to think of it, and might be a little risky about this DLC, but nonetheless, I have the season pass, so I'm probably going to still get it, or maybe I got to get a second season pass if they decide to do that and attach the story of DLC to that, and I don't know. I think we got all the characters anyway, right? So a second season pass would make sense. I, I don't know. what what is, Does this make sense to any of y'all? But either way you see it, I'm probably going to still buy it, hoping it doesn't kill my new Xbox One X. But more Mortal Kombat. More Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat 11 was fire. I'm just not happy with the way Scorpion is in this game. I, I'm going to be honest. The game is fire. But I don't like Scorpion's moveset. He does, the, the fluidity that he used to have in Mortal Kombat 10... And even the one before it, Mortal Kombat 9, he was smooth. You know, there's been... What I do love about Mortal Kombat is that they keep finding ways to reinvent these characters but still keeping them the same. But I don't like the way it really kind of meshed together in some of the, with, with uh, the way Scorpion controls. But I'll still play as him. I love Scorpion. So when I play a game, I always go for the fire types. I'm going to go for Scorpion. That's my man. I'm just hyped to basically have some Mortal Kombat 11 DLC. Story DLC? How long could it be? Five hours? Ten hours? Uh, I think the main the story was about seven hours long. I actually finished it in one sitting, literally. And, yeah, I want to say it was about seven hours. Give us maybe five hours, three hours, whatever. But just give us a bevy, maybe four or five new characters. I'm down for that. That could be a pretty dope idea. Let me know down in the comments below what y'all think. And moving on, Microsoft has announced that Xbox 2020... Well, I'll be wondering what that is probably like you, but this means they're calling it 2020 because they're basically announcing something every month. This is coming to you from IGN and it says Xbox has announced Xbox 2020, a program of monthly updates on the future of Xbox. Beginning with this week's Inside Xbox broadcast, a July episode will focus on looking at first party Xbox Series X games from Xbox Game Studios. Xbox will also be joining IGN's Summer of Gaming Showcase in June. This summer is... This summer is still dope. Even without the presence of E3, we have at least three... From three big, huge platforms. We have Jeff Keighley throwing his own thing. IGN throwing their own thing. And GameSpot throwing their own thing. And Xbox seems like it's going to be at everything. Because it's all through 2020 and... I'm wondering if it starts this week, two days from now, on May 7th, when they said we're getting the first, when we're going to take a first look at some of the gameplay for the Xbox Series X. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. It, something every month, every month, Game Pass, new games, they bought up all those studios. Let's see what they got going on. I really think that they've been hard at work, and they had their heads down, and they were working, and... Let's see if you, you're going to just bring it back. Now, we know Sony's going to come hard with the exclusives. They came hard ex um, with the exclusives in the PS4 era. But I know they're going to they're really going to be ready for war on the PS5 era. They're going to be like, yo, this is why we top. Let's see if Xbox, if Xbox honestly can even get close to what Sony did in the PS4 era. 
I think that'll be a good comeback. We can call Xbox the comeback kid. <laughs> Moving on. And now I know The Last of Us just can't stay out of the news. But once again, it's good news. There's going to be another trailer basically today. Yes. Basically today. Um, just, you know, updated and we're going to see what's happening. They released a, a little tease of Ellie saying, I'm going to kill everybody. Uh, basically, and you didn't see her, but you heard her, and it said The Last of Us Part 2. I'm, I really want to stay away from this trailer, but I'm gonna be covering it here, so I, I don't really care to see anything else personally because I'm gonna buy this game, I'm gonna play this game, and nothing's gonna stop me. Uh, but fine, I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna be excited, and I'm absolutely gonna love it. Ellie was an established, strong character from the first one, and with her leading this one, I've fully, fully right behind her it's believable it's awesome i know y'all probably getting tired of hearing me talk about the last of us but the last of us now moving on to the next story ea okay so ea has really been trying to be good guy ea lately i'm gonna be honest and you know with fallen order and they just constantly, let's, I will give them credit where it's due. They constantly updated Battlefront 2. You remember all those issues with the microtransactions? Nah, that was fixed. And they're still updating it. I think we, had, I'm talking about um, uh, even up to like yesterday, they gave another update. They're doing well. They're doing well at covering themselves up. But right here, this, this is coming to you from GameSpot. And it says, EA comments on free PS5 and Xbox Series X upgrades for its games. Some of EA's games will be available on PS5 and Series X with free upgrades, it seems. Um, doesn't that sound like smart delivery? PlayStation 5 didn't say they were doing that yet, right? To my knowledge, they didn't say anything. They said they're working on it. They, I think they did basically say that it was, uh, PS4 should definitely be backwards compatible with PS5, but they didn't say anything about upgrades. That was only on the Xbox's side. Unless somebody heard this elsewhere, let me know down in the comments below. But from, from the rest of the article, it says a new generation of consoles is coming this holiday with the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. One of the largest game publishers in the business has now spoken about delivering free upgrades of its games for the new machines to help consumers through the transition. Remember when... We went from PS3 to PS4, Xbox 360 to Xbox One. Everything was just basically getting remastered from the previous gen. Seems like everybody, it seems like it's, it, we're doing away with that. And they're just deciding, you know what? Just carry it over. Give it a big patch. Upgrade it. I'm all for it. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't mind buying another game twice if I like it. I bought The Last of Us twice. Oh, yeah. Y'all was tired of it. Y'all thought that was the last time you was going to hear The Last of Us. Nope. The Last of Us. Moving on to the final story. <laughs> Moving on to the final story. Now, this is this is a funny one. And honestly, probably one of the funniest articles, gaming articles that I've come across in a very long time. And I want to say this article is a little shy of 420, but this article is hilarious. It was originally reported on by Polygon. And that was funny. But Kotaku kind of won up them. And let, let me just give it to you, right? It, it, this, is, this is very funny. And it says, from Polygon, Animal Crossing fans say they're getting in trouble on Facebook over weeds. Hear me out. Hear me out. Ten right there. It says, the devil's lettuce strikes again. <laughs> Facebook's community standards are clear when it comes to regulated goods. You can't sell or buy non-medical drugs on the platform. And this, of course, includes marijuana. But the explosion of Animal Crossing New Horizons means there's now a bevy of people talking about weeds, as in the pesky plant. And this is apparently setting off Facebook safety measures. Now, I'm sure a lot of people get on Facebook and they, they, they definitely say stuff that needs to be censored. Absolutely. But... Sometimes people say stuff and it's just misconstrued. And this is the case, but let's let's continue this. Let's go on to what Kotaku said. And this is just the headline alone got my attention. It was just so hilarious. It says, stop saying weed when you're talking about Animal Crossing on Facebook. And I'm like, what? What is going on? So I clicked it. 
And first of all, let me just quote, let me just quote the writer, right? Luke Plunkett, this is an awesome article. I read this article when I was just in laughing. Brilliant, brilliant work, my friend. And it says, Facebook is owned by humans, but run by machines. And those machines are unable to differentiate between a weed and thing that grows in the ground in Nintendo's Animal Crossing, and I guess in real life, and the other weed. <laughs> As Polygon report, numerous private Facebook groups have begun warning users to avoid using the word as both they they and the individuals involved have been receiving notices from Facebook that the constant use of weed is a breach of the site's community standards. The fun doesn't end there. The fun doesn't end there. Somebody actually, in one of these groups, somebody actually put up a post. And the post is hilarious, just to warn people from saying it. And here's what it says. Notice, we are no longer approving posts containing the word the words weed weeds facebook must think we are running a drug empire because we have gotten a few strikes because of people looking to buy or sell clumps of weeds we are sorry for the inconvenience (laughs) as we also think this is stupid please use other creative words to describe weeds in order for your post to be approved again all posts containing the word weed weeds will be declined Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Honestly, I'm not playing Animal Crossing. I'm not a fan. But honestly, if you're gathering weeds for any reason in this game, I honestly think Nintendo knows what they're doing because they've been known to smartly put some adult-like humor in these things. Like, there's been funny things in Zelda. That's what I will tell you. If you play Breath of the Wild and read some of the books that you find on some of the shelves in the game, you'll find something very hilarious. Very hilarious. But this, this is a funny, funny story. And I think a great way to end this video, lads and ladettes, thank you for tuning in. And please don't forget to like, if not, dislike, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when your boy is posting. Thank y'all for tuning in. This video is finito.